Thank you very much for inviting me. So when Sister Xiu Qin asked if I could share my journey in promoting vegetarianism at work, as she saw me being reported on Dai TV, I was most embarrassed. Embarrassed because I've not really done much. And all I've done, they are what Master has asked us to do as his disciples. Yeah, it's what we always say, this is it's really our responsibilities and accountabilities. But nevertheless, Master also says we should share what we have done. So imprinting our experiences for the future people to reference. So despite my shyness, here I am. So thank you very much again. Okay, so when I was thinking about what to share, I started thinking about my own spiritual development, what I've learned through the years. And what I've learned through the years, let me just share this uh, cartoon strip with you. It says here, I meditate, I burn candles, I drink green tea, and I still want to smack some people. Uh, unfortunately, that actually quite describes uh, me sometimes. It's like when I start thinking about it, very, very uh, repentant that, you know, you go for a fun for home, soon for young, and after that you go to work and you get irritated by the most insignificant things and you want to just want to spank some people. So this cartoon actually reminds me to tame my temperament sometimes, but more importantly, more importantly, it tells me that, you know, my behavior, my actions is what it counts ultimately. That's what, you know, um, Master always says, we, you know, we can be the best Bodhisattvas, but if our mouth isn't good, we're still not a good uh, Bodhisattva. So all the Dharma that Master has imparted to us, I must leave that out in our daily lives. And since the most part of my daily life is at work, I should be a Tsuzi person even at work then that is a singular identity, doing what Master say we should do. Everywhere we go, I like to preach and like to talk about Suti. So this is my, actually my own beliefs, yeah. So, so today I'll be sharing about, you know, in my sharing, I'll use this framework, talking about why do I do what I do? So the true north, because um, I know that through my own conversations with lots of brothers and sisters, through Facebook and, and everywhere, so many people ask, why is it that I have this God to talk about Suzy at work then, or even do Suzy work? But I feel that because this is my identity, but what is my true north? Why, and what are my guiding principles? What are the frameworks I use as my guiding principles? And the op opportunities, you know, I kind of cease to promote vegetarianism at work. And lastly, in this sharing, I'd like to talk about my gratitude, the blessings that I've seen through the journey, as well as the regrets that I have. Right. So, um, so the why, the true north. So in everything I do, I think, I hope that to be able to understand why I'm doing it, because when I understand it, chances are I know what will be the right path. So why do I promote vegetarianism at work then? Or why do I talk about Tsuji at work? So, and the why for me is that I always remind myself that this vow that we took when we were commissioned, and you know, when we, we go here and it's also commissioned. So it says to me every morning, I remind myself, take the Buddha's mind as our own mind, the Buddha's mind, you know, whatever, you know, the sutras that we've learned and take our master's will as our own will. What does master want us to do? You now that will be my own will as well. As so, you know, yi fu xing wei ji xing, yi shi zi wei ji zi. So when master asks us to promote vegetarianism, I, I immediately think I shouldn't just be eating my own vegetarian food, but I should be actively going out to talk to people about killing less and promoting vegetarianism, especially during these COVID times. So, you know, to, to talk about all this, perhaps I'll give a little bit more about my own journey in the, through Tsuti. So I chanced upon Tsuti through Dai TV in 2010. And I visited the Hualien, the Jinxi boat in the summer of 2011. That was a one day visit. I went from Taipei in the morning, Taipei to Hualien, and then evening from Hualien back to Taipei. But on that very day in 2011, when I visited, I pledged my vow to be a full vegetarian onwards. And I've since not looked back. 
Then there's another momentous event that that's a water repentance enactment in 2013, which I participated. And, you know, then I was granted the Gui in 2014, officially becoming boss's disciple. But because of work commitment, that required a lot of extensive traveling. I was not able to attend training classes organized by the Hong Kong City branch. But I really wanted to do city work, doing what master asked of his disciples, but without the white, blue and white uniform. I was really fairly active, you know, in garnering donations and promoting things to forest in them. But there were pressures from fellow brothers and sisters that I needed to be commissioned if I want to properly, properly do Tsuji's work. So in my one and only face-to-face -face short conversations with Master in late 2013, I asked Master how to do Tsuji when I'm not commissioned. Uh, master, instead of telling me then go and get your training and be commissioned, Master didn't say that. Master's response to me was, just do it. I was actually quite amazed when Master just said, just do it. She's what you do. Now, I've since told myself everything I do, I'll just do it as Master said. At work, in my daily life, I live by this dictum. So, with just do it as what Master says and really having the Buddha's mind and Master's will, what are my guiding principles then? You know, when I think about what to do for Tsuji, and the guiding post for me will be really the Sida Zi Yuan Ba La Fa Jiao Ying. So it's the four main missions and eight main endeavors. So the, this is a framework that I actually use when I think about what do I want, you know, what how should I be contributing in my daily life? You know, so that so I will not go into this detail because everyone knows this, um, you know, this this four and eight a lot better than me. So, but by knowing why I do what I do, I feel it isn't enough to sustain the Tsuji initiatives at work, especially you know, at times when I feel it conflicts with my work, or because I'm actually a very introverted person and I feel very shy, and it's so easy to say nah nah nah, you know this I shouldn't be talking about. Tsuji, you know, I shouldn't be talking my own religion when I'm working. It should be just be work that. So how do I persist when I have this sort of sort of little noise in my ear? You know? So the fundamental beliefs that I have is what do we do? What Master wants us to do? So one of the beliefs I always hold is that I do whatever Master says we should do. So this is what I believe in. So, and then the second belief that I have is Susie's mission and endeavors will positively change the lives and communities. So I need to believe that because if I don't believe it, I will not be able to, to actually, you know, continue with the, the, the sort of the initiatives that I'm promoting. Like I need to believe that vegetarian is actually very good for, for the, um, the, 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 the communities and the environments and to our spiritual lives. Then thirdly, and most importantly, I'm very proud to be Master's Disciples and a Tsuji member, most importantly. So everywhere I go, even with my uniform, I'm very, very, I'm always very glad to tell people that I'm a Tsuji member and a Master's Disciple. I, I don't think it conflicts with anything. I, I tell my employer, I tell my bosses that I'm a Tsuji member. So with that as a sort of a spiritual mindset I have, a mindset I have, how do I actually go around to promote vegetarianism at work then? So this is content vegetarianism, you know, for this sharing. So the first part of it is through city initiatives and programs to engage my colleagues. So, you know, for example, this, um, you know, the 111 that we have, this initiative to encourage more people to go for plant-based food. So what we did was that I got colleagues to pledge how many vegetarian meals they would commit a week to eat. So during that week, I would check in on them. And if I know that they are kind of slagging behind, I will really encourage them. And again, to repeat why we need to go on the vegetarian diet. And for some of them, I'll actually invite them to go for lunch with me, you know, vegetarian lunch with me. For, for me, that's a big deal because, you know, my personality, I usually prefer to have lunch by myself, but for the environmental sake and for the peace of mind, it's worth going against my shyness and inward nature.
So for this program, hundreds have actually signed up. I do not know if everyone, how many have actually turned full-time vegetarian, but these hundreds who have pledged, the Dharma seeds have definitely been planted in their soul because through this event, they hear about you know, the Tzuchi and the Master's of Wisdom as well. I'm sure they will germinate in no time. And, you know, just a quick note on that too, besides promoting vegetarianism, I also, you know, uh, you know uh, bring my colleagues to do recycling works, but most importantly, to get them to understand why we need to save the environment. This is not just about religion, but this is really about saving the environment. And when we save the environment, we have a more peaceful mind. So by encouraging them to do it, understanding it, we you know hopefully we will reduce stress and there'll be less to recycle. And no, and also what I do is that becoming a member, getting my colleagues to become a member to learn how to love through donating, you know, um, to, to, to through the nations. So, you know, for this part of the nation part, I was initially very hesitant to ask because I've just felt that uh, how do I open my mouth to get people to donate? But when I think about it, this is something that's actually very good for a community. Uh, by not asking, I may be forfeiting uh, my colleagues, you know, want and loved to help the community there. So I ask, well, true enough, many have actually you know, rejected me and that's the worst part. I'll, I'll actually ask myself, what's the worst that can come out of it? People just rejection and truly many have rejected. However, you know, when I learned for people who have accepted and donated, and many of them have actually, They've, always, they've actually planted the seeds of love in the community to know how to give and to give freely, unconditionally. So many who have donated, they've heard, they know about the Master's love and wisdom as well, because I give them a Jinsu of Horizon card and make sure that, you know, um, I give them a sort of regular catch up on the activities too. Mm. So, the second part that you know, I, I look at opportunities to do Suti's work at work is through company business initiatives. So when I started my current job with Shangri-La Group in 2020, I thought maybe you know one of the things to promote vegetarianism is to you know work together with the restaurant chefs to encourage them to offer more vegetarian dishes. Uh, I'm not from the FMB side, you know, I'm more in the management side, uh, not doing um, sort of like food and beverage, but getting to know them and talking to them about vegetarian based diet, plant-based diet, you know, to encourage them to go try it. Many, these chefs are actually all award-winning Michelin star chefs. And when they cook meals, I'm sure they can do very, very nice meals. And they did. Um, you know, and uh, they did, and they did really nice meals. So I will share later about the menu offerings that have since extended, and guess who tasted this vegetarian food demand for more. But first, let us watch this video click. Chinese 將我材料提升呢。尤其端午節即將到來,今年多出了三種素粽,讓民眾可以選購,其中造型特殊的竹筒粽,還得到了美食冠軍領先其他的婚食料理,這讓酒店更願意推廣素食。For the last one odd year, we've been very closely associated with the Chu Chi Foundation here in Hong Kong. Uh, you know, a lot of our colleagues have been going and helping out uh, uh, with packaging. It's made us realize that uh, there's so much variety and there's so much to do uh, with vegetarian food. Uh, <音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音> 
。美食的定义不再是大鱼大肉，回归本性，清淡简朴，更有滋味。台新闻之上美职工李寒梅、苏婉珍，香港报道。Thank you very much, Anna. So this is actually one of the news clips that's from the I News. And as you heard from Anurag, my colleague, you know, he's actually the F and B manager. You know, he participated in two you know, uh, activities. He actually tasted our vegetarian meals and realized there's so many varieties um, that there are actually, you know, that we can actually explore in the vegetarian meals. And that's where it starts. That's where the whole concept of offering more vegetarian starts as well. And with Chef Daniel, who has become a very good friend of mine. Um, he really believes that that way to go is really vegetarian, a plant-based diet as well. So that's really very encouraging. And what I've seen here is, that if I can share, is that you know this uh, Shangri-La hotel menus, there are lots of vegetarian, lots and lots more vegetarian food um, offerings right now in Kowloon Shangri-La that's in Hong Kong. And for this KL uh, vegetarian menu, I just wanted to share this because it actually came from a request from a. KL sister, Kuala Lumpur sister, in the captain's uh, session, Dharma talk. She asked if Shangri-La could provide uh, more selection in our, you know, in our vegetarian um, menu section. So I took this request to the Southeast Asia CEO, and miraculously, a few years weeks later, they shared the extended menu to me. So there's a lot, a lot more that you know can be consumed, and I was told too that um, it's become very, very popular. Many people are actually chosen um, vegetarian, uh, the vegetarian menu when they come to have their lunch or dinner uh, with the Shangri-La, you know, Shang Palace in KL. So this is a Singapore offering. Again, the chef says that he can customize any veg dishes for us as long as I can pre-order them. And this is the uh, vegan high tea set in Hong Kong. So many wrote in the social media that this requires at least one month's reservations. So I'm not exactly, I'm not actually not promoting Shangri-La's uh, vegetarian menus to everyone, but what I want to actually uh, sort of like narrate or to share is that when we encourage vegetarianism and they listen and they start creating, and when they see there's a demand, they become more confident. Because once they become more confident, they offer more. The gratifying part is that less animals are killed and it becomes a more peaceful society. And the most part of it too, from my own experience is that, uh, as what I mentioned just now, the most, you know, all we have to do is just ask. If, you know, they say no, then no, then we wait for another chance, and which means that, you know, uh, the opportunity isn't right yet, but uh, we'll just wait for another chance. But we never know unless we ask that. So when I ask and they do it and we do it with such, uh, you know, such beautiful, successful results, I'm just very, very, you know, uh, touched and appreciative of this opportunity. So the next part, you know, the next opportunities we have, you know, when I look into promoting vegetarianism and also the broader sense to see to my colleagues, uh, the Dharma teachings and Master's teaching uh, and Suti is through the CSR work, the Corporate Social Responsibility. So, you know, uh, in 2020, when COVID struck, uh, my chairman said we should provide sustainable support to the underprivileged families in Hong Kong. So, you know, I presented this before, so I'll not repeat myself. So the whole event is that we will, the whole event is providing uh, food deliveries to the underprivileged twice a month for, well, for the whole two years, actually. We did it for two years and more. So in brief, there is an opportunity to promote vegetarian too, because the whole package is all vegetarian, all from our Suzy, you know, um, you know, food. So this program benefits both the communities in need, those underprivileged families, and many of my colleagues who volunteered in the packing and delivering too, because in every session, they get to hear about Moses' wisdom through the Tutsi brothers and sisters, and experience the love and wisdom from Master through us and the food with that we deliver. So maybe I'll just play this um, video as an example. We want to hear what our colleagues actually share. Oh, 
關係嘅時候，可能我哋啦，或者甚至老人家更加少出門口啦。咁我諗佢哋日常生活其實我哋今日送嘅一啲日常用品，佢哋會用嘅食用品咧，其實都會好幫助到佢哋。我都似第一次做義工咯，咁但係原來啊都幾好玩喎，即係大家一齊咁樣啊啲公婆又開心，咁自己都開心咯。其實話一啲物資上嚟啦，而家好忙咁樣 pack 緊啲嘢啦。我哋將會 pack 十二樣嘢入去嘅，跟住就星期六咧就送俾啲誒濕水寶啲居民。This all bacteria. Working in hospitality, it's really a difficult time, but there's also many people who can even be more affected. So it's also good to take some of our own time. participate to the community yeah, you know, I think it's a very rewarding experience. Uh, the things you do here, you can actually see, you know, the, the progress right before your eyes. And then, you know, whatever you're doing today is going to be benefit of people who need it a lot more than we do. For about 10 years, this is kind of the first time that I really felt like I can get back to anything that's so busy with work and like that. So it's nice to step back a little bit and help out. For me personally, I get to know a bit more about Hong Kong mm. and uh, understanding some of the uh, places that people stay and also what are the challenges faced by the poor people. And also, thank you, colleagues, for contributing your time and also your money to actually make this a uh, meaningful event for everybody here. I think that loneliness is the worst killer than hunger in developed societies like Hong Kong. They always want to speak to us a lot more, ask us to stay back a lot more. Every time I watch this movie clip, it's this video clip, I, I I get very emotional because just thinking about how my colleagues are all come to get, coming together to help the community and really getting to know Suzy and getting to know Master's Love. Um, whether they join Suzy or not, and of course, hopefully you know, they will join eventually, but just having that love and knowing the, you know, the Dharma of uh, why we're doing what we're doing, that, that continues even due today. Right, okay, let me just continue. Uh, as what Anurag, sorry, uh, Anurag has said, you know, coming to do, uh, coming to do the delivery and uh, packing work, um, there's so much variety of experience. And one of the reasons is because we prepare vegetarian lunch for all the colleagues, the volunteers who come to do the packing. So through the lunch, 
many have actually changed the perception of what vegetarian meals should taste like. You know, people will be saying that, well, you know, that plant-based plant soup can be so sweet and delicious, and vegetables can be so appetizing. So through this encounter, this coming to uh, to to see to do packing and a free lunch for them, vegetarian lunch, that seed is also planted, and to know that after that, they'll be more willing to try out vegetarian dishes. And, you know, for that too, so during festival locations such as Dragon Boat festivals, we asked for tells if we could provide more vegetarian dumplings to the needy rather than meat based. And again, they agreed and everyone enjoyed the, the plant based, actually, the vegetarian dumplings. So more than 1,000 dumplings were distributed this year. And for the mooncakes, more than 7,000 mooncakes were distributed as well. These are the, um, what's that, the vegan mooncakes that's been specially prepared. Um, then this is a gingerbread decoration workshop for Christmas that we invited the Tsuti Sofa Care recipients families to come and have, to, to, to really feel the festive occasions and to enjoy and have a vegetarian meal as well as for the, um, the Mooncake Festival to the lantern making workshop just on which I shared. Uh, they came for a vegetarian workshop, uh, the vegetarian meals was actually provided to and everyone was most happy. So. So, you know, in Shangri-La, there's a tradition for sharing joy, you know, during festive occasions, you know, with the community, uh, you know, for people in need in the community. So I just thought that if I could ask them to offer more vegetarian food in these occasions, you know, miraculously they agreed. So again, it's really just opening and asking. And if they agree, you know, really happy. If they don't agree, then we try another time then. So just miraculously for all these occasions, you know, my colleagues have actually been very, very receptive, most receptive, and especially when they know that plant-based vegetarian diet is actually very good for health. So this is another sort of initiative that we have, a vegetarian month campaign. We get our colleagues and friends to participate in this one month campaign where they have at least one vegetarian meal every day or even three meals a day. And um, you know, most the Tsuti brothers and sisters in Hong Kong, they volunteer to pair with these recipients. This is participants actually, and to encourage them along the way. And this has actually reaped very good results because many of them again realize that it's actually not that difficult to go on vegetarian diet. So again, just getting them to go on vegetarian diet and getting them to know that it's actually, they don't feel tired because one of myth is that when you go on vegetarian diet, you get very tired and you get weak, but they realize very quickly that it, it can, uh, the uh, plant-based diet can be very feeling as well. So this is another initiative. So another, in, uh, well, this is another big one, big initiative is when the fifth wave of COVID hits Hong Kong in early January, 2022. So we're talking about tens of thousands of infection every day. That's where the, almost the whole cities were locked down. People were all work from home and NGOs again did not dare come out to help. Um, my company actually, you know, Shangri-La actually pledged to cook 6,000 warm meals a day for people in need. So, you know, during that time, many corporates and NGOs were just distributing test kits and face masks. You know, they, they were and still very important, the uh, test kits and masks. But for Shangri-La, we feel that, you know, um, we should be providing them warm meals because what's most important for them is really the nutritious meals that they, they have to get to fight the virus or to prevent from getting virus. So to have a strong immunity system. And through this um, initiatives, again, I approached the chefs to say that, can we do vegetarian meals? Because many of the recipients are actually the elderly or the young. And a mushy, sort of a softer food will actually feed them better. Again, uh, very, very fortunately, very blessedly, they all agreed to go on a plant-based kind of meal. And so they've actually served this and we've done it for actually full stream, more than three months until summer comes because when summer comes, uh, food, warm well, foods actually gets bad, you know, uh, sort of bad easily. So we stopped the program until when uh, the cold, so cold weather comes back again. And hopefully when by the time COVID would have gone, but in any case, during a full three months, 6,000 meals a day, and a lot of them actually get to enjoy vegetarian meals, actually. Mm. So let's listen to what my my colleagues say about this initiative. Hello. 
開心，可以有份參與呢個活動。喺呢個活動咧，最重要一樣嘢，我哋可以發揮到咧，香格里拉同佢嘅精神。身為香格里拉集團嘅員工，我哋都好開心同埋好支持呢次嘅活動，因為我覺得呢啲係社會企業嘅責任。係，你哋好啊！我哋啱啱咧，今日我哋開始煮一千人嘅晚餐。晚餐而家出發啦！呢度咧有一千人餐，咁啊，我哋而家出發啦！好開心，我哋今次終於可以做到呢個工作啦！希望可以幫到大家。呢、这個活動都比較特別嘅，多謝各個團隊嘅幫助同支持，令到佢咁順利、咁成功。誒，亦都好符合香格里拉嘅精神。今次參加依個活動，我好開心啦，亦都好多謝公司俾依個機會我啦，幫到好多有需要幫助嘅人。希望對社會有善睇啦，希望受惠者食得開心。當然最開心嘅，我有份參與呢個活動，可以幫到好多好多有需要嘅人。Again, I, I feel very touched just watching this um, video clip because just the sheer camaraderie and the spirit of helping isn't this what most have asked of us to uh, you know to hopefully that you know by all coming together there's a lot more peace in the society when everyone come together to help each other and through this all these promotions and master's teaching along the way you know but through through the volunteer work. I'm seeing that as a you know, sort of a seeds blossoming at work. So yeah, very, very touched.